Okay, uh, let's start it. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our last session before lunch. We'll just make sure we don't talk too long to make you hungry. My name is Min Chen. This is my coworker, um, Prachi Damini. We're both from Citrix and work on the Apache Cloud Stack of open source project. Today, we're going to present the new project we, re we recently worked on for the 4.4. That's Cloud Stack Identity and Access Management System. We call it IAM. <clears throat> this is the agenda for today. First, I will describe the background of this project. Many talk about what is the limitation of current Cloud Stack RBAC system. What's the drawback there? And then come talk about why we come up with this idea to work on this IAM. And then we do describe the goal we want to achieve for this new feature. And then I'll give you some uh, brief overview of the architecture design. And next, I will just hand over to Prachi to delve into some implementation details. And we will describe the several use cases that, that can be implemented by this new IAM model. Finally, we'll uh, need some se several next steps because we only finished the uh, phase one, provide uh, the RBAC uh, foundation piece. Uh, there are several tasks remaining to implement this uh, foundation into Cloud Stack for several areas. So now, let's talk about background. Uh, Cloud Stack have some uh, access control facilities right now, but they are very limited. So if you use a Cloud Stack, you should know there are some fixed uh, roles, like uh, root admin, domain admin, and resource owners. They have very pre-baked access control. You cannot change it. And also, we cannot provide support for you to create a custom role. And also, there are some special resources. For example, the shared network, affinity groups. In the service layer, we have very hard-coded um, access control business logic built in. And if you want to change any same behavior, you have to go to delve into that code to change there. In the 4.2, we also have introduced a feature called a dedicated resource feature that can do some granting permission but that granting permission by dedicating resource is very limited. So by considering all these limitations, we thought about proposing a new uh, IAM model to work with Cloud Stack. The goal is for us is trying to provide a true pluggable IAM service. Here's, there are two words I want to highlight here, IAM and a service. So let's talk about what is IAM here. IAM is sure, uh, stand for the Identity Access and Management System. So um, think about, simply put, this is just like a security guard. When the people come in, they want to access your system resource. They want to do some actions on top of it. Do you give him permission to allow or deny? That's the functionality for him. So this picture describes some common taxonomies used in the IAM. There are some principles and there are some resources. You want to work on these resources. So how do you determine that? You define several uh, policies. This policy, you can think of as a set of permissions. Each permission describes who, that's a principle, what action you can work on, and what kind of resource. In some fancy case, you can even define in under what conditions you can do that. And also in IAM, you also can manage users through a IAM group so that the admins can centrally control and easily manage the ground permission to a group of account. And there's another actual concept called a role. <laughs> Just like a picture shows there, like a principle, you can impersonate a role to do some action. Uh, this analogy is just like, a, sometimes like a paranoid mom maybe want to impersonate their kids to take a pic on their Facebook uh, conversation. <laughs> so then map, to, map that model to our cloud stack IAM model. In the phase one implementation, we implement all the concept there, except the role model. So we didn't implement the impersonation. But in the principle, in the cloud stack, actually map to the cloud stack account. If you use cloud stack, you will know that permission control is only done at the account level, not on the user level. The user only provides a login credential. So principle in our system is account. An account can be assigned to several groups. You can belong to multiple groups. Then you can define a policy on top. You can attach one or more policies to a group. Also, we introduce you can define a policy attached direct to your account. That's the, the next error there. In case you want only grant permission to individual account, not a group of people. 
So next, what is the service we talk about? Here's we want to implement IAM as a pluggable service. So just like uh, AWS IAM service, we want to follow the service-oriented architecture so that we have a loosely coupled with the cloud stack core. We want to host the IAM server as an independent service running at a, a special, a different uh, server listening at a certain endpoint so that the cloud stack or even other portal service can make calls to do access checking. This IAM service consists of two components. One we call the IAM server, the other called IAM plugin. IAM server, you can think about it as an implementation of a pure IAM taxonomy I described in the first picture. This one, taxonomy has nothing to do with cloud stack terminology, so they don't understand cloud stack terminology. And in this release, we provide an uh, out-of-box IAM implementation based on um, our IAM schema I will just uh, show you in a minute. And for the third-party vendors, you actually can implement your own IAM server. So for example, you want to use AD or LDAP protocol, then you can just implement the IAM server interface in our code. Then you can, that can be easily hooked up into Cloud Stack. And to, to work with Cloud Stack, we provide a lot of uh, plugin, I, plugin uh, IAM plugin to integrate with Cloud Stack. This is just a Cloud Stack plugin using the plugin framework and goes calling, well, so that the Cloud Stack can call it back through the adapter interface. In our case, we specifically uh, define a three adapter interface. One is the API checker, the other is security checker, and there's query selector. These three interfaces you can implement. And also we provide a new IAM plugin APIs so that any client can issue to create a group, policy, ground permission. So let's see how these two components work together and how they interact with Cloud Stack. On this diagram here, you can see on the left-hand side, you have Cloud Stack core, and they have API and a server. On the right-hand side, that's the IAM service I'm talking about. In the Cloud Stack uh, core, we define a public uh, adapter interface. That's API checker and security checker and the query selector. On the right-hand side, IAM service, on the server side, they just implement the, the database schema I'm just talking about. That's a server, you implement your IAM server interface. They also can provide an IAM server API in case some third party want to directly talk to your IAM server. Instead, go through the plugin and in Cloud Stack. Then Cloud Stack plugin, uh, IAM plugin interact with IAM server. It provides a concrete implementation of this three adapter interface. We call that role-based API checker role-based entity checker, and role-based query selector. Um, so basically, plugin, plugin will call to the IAM server API to issue any API request from Cloud Stack. This is a, a simple schema. You, it's actually basic database representation for the IAM model I just described before. That's our out-of-box uh, out implementation for the IAM server. You can see here, um, we have an account and user that's from the cloud stack itself, the database table. An account can belong to uh, several groups, and there's a group and a policy you can, you can define. And the policy and the permission is a one-to-many relationship. Then you can attach the policy to the group, that's through the first link. You can attach the policy through the account, that's the middle link. So our implementation purely based on this database schema. Um, any third party, you can actually define your own schema uh, implement that, that uh, interface, uh, IAM server interface, so that you can plug into Cloud Stack or host your, as your own IAM server for your business use. And also, you can also define your schema instead of using this table base, you can use uh, XML, JSON blob, whatsoever. Uh, next, I will just hand over to Prach to talk about the, I, the plugin details and use cases. Hello everyone, I am Prachi Damle. I'm working on CloudStack since four years. I'm working at Citrix. And with Min, I'm developing the IAM feature. So now I'll take forward the presentation by uh, diving into some implementation details of the IAM plugin component. Now as Min talked about, um, the IAM server is based on true IAM concepts. It does not understand any of the CloudStack terminologies. So we need some connector to work with CloudStack the plugin acts like a connector. 
It understands the CloudStack terminologies and it integrates with CloudStack by implementing the adapter framework that is available. Also, it exposes some IAM APIs and these APIs follow the pluggable service model of CloudStack and because of which these APIs, they um, are exposed to the same endpoint as CloudStack APIs. Then there are three adapters that the plugin involves. API checker, security checker, and query selector, each serving different purposes. Now about the IAM APIs. Now the plugin has to act as a connector between CloudStack and the IAM server. So it has to reflect the CloudStack model into the IAM model. For that, the APIs uh, are important. Consider the CloudStack account, which is a pure CloudStack entity. Then we have APIs to create, um, delete, and list IAM groups. Then we need APIs to integrate with CloudStack account and the IAM group entity. So add account to IAM group and remove account from IAM group will serve this purpose. Another IAM entity is IAM policy. We have create, delete, and list IAM policies. Then there's the IAM permission entity. For that, we have add IAM permission to the policy and remove IAM permission from the IAM policy. Now then the policies have to be attached to the group. So attach IAM policy and remove IAM policy from the group serve this purpose. Lastly, we also have a facility to directly attach the policies and permissions to, club, to the CloudStack account. So attach uh, IAM policy to account and remove IAM policy from account APIs uh, provide this facility. So this way, the IAM APIs of the plugin will try to bind together the CloudStack terminology with the IAM terminologies. For example, CloudStack works with accounts and domains and it, has a, it always works with a domain hierarchy. But in IAM terminology, there is no domain concept, but we have IAM groups. So to model that, um, the create IAM group API takes in the domain ID, so it understands CloudStack domain concept, and then it converts the domain ID, loads the domain, and gets the path out of that domain and sets it to the group uh, in the IAM server. The server doesn't understand the domain hierarchy, but using the path, we can model the hierarchy in the plugin. Next, I'll talk about the adapters. First one is the API checker adapter uh, interface of CloudStack. The goal of this adapter is to check if a certain user can invoke a given API. Now, the current uh, implementation of API checker in CloudStack works with the static roles and commands.properties file. Now, CloudStack has uh, three to four default roles, root admin, resource domain admin, domain admin, and user. And which role can invoke which API? This has been pre-baked into a property file, which is the commands.properties. So as you can see, uh, start virtual machine API can be invoked by all the roles. So this is the bitmap value for start virtual machine. Now the limitation of this is, we definitely cannot add any custom role and assign permissions to it in this model. So the IAM feature provides an implementation to overcome that. The role-based API access checker implements the API checker interface. And it, on startup, in order to model CloudStack's uh, current commands.properties uh, design, it loads the permissions from the property file. It creates default groups and default policies for the CloudStack roles and assigns these permissions into these policies. Then when a check access call happens, then role-based API access checker will list the group for the given user, list the policies of that group, then check the permissions which are being assigned to that policy. And if the permissions allow uh, invocation of this API, then the call can go through. So this is an illustration how the default CloudStack policies are modeled into the IAM schema by the plugin. 
So this is a fancy commands.properties file illustration. It says something like API name equal to what value for giving the permissions. So start virtual machine is 15. API checker, when it uh, starts up, loads the default groups, creates default groups, creates default policies. And then for each API, it creates a permission entity and assigns it to the respective policies that have uh, been given permission in the commands.properties. Thus, if an API is only allowed for, say, root admin, migrate virtual machine is such API, then it will be assigned only to the root admin policy. Next adapter for the plugin is security checker. Now, this interface of CloudStack, uh, the goal for it is to check whether, given a caller and an entity, if a certain action can be performed on that entity by the caller. So the difference is that it checks entity-based permission. Current implementation of CloudStack is a domain checker, which only checks for account ownership or placement in the domain tree. Uh, but again, the limitation is doesn't support custom permissions. Now, IAM feature introduces the role-based entity access checker. It again checks policies and permissions uh, for the entity and access type by looking at the schema. If a permission is found uh, for the given access type action on that given entity type, then the call can proceed. Now, currently, uh, we only work with allow kind of permissions. Uh, we don't support yet uh, specifying permissions to deny something. This is because our policy evaluation logic would then have to consider priorities if there are multiple permissions on the same entity types. So that will be something for our phase two model. Now, access type. So as you can see, there are two parameters, access type and action. So what is the difference? Action is mapped to the API name of CloudStack. But in a certain API, it is not that always one entity is being operated on. Uh, in an API, there will be multiple entities, and then you need to access them in different way. So we have enumeration of access type defined. List entry defines a read-only access for the entity. Use entry is read and use access. And operate entry is an operate access. Now what the difference between the first two, list and use, is that list entry, for example, you can, if you have access list entry on a template, you can list that template. But if you have access use entry on the template, you can list that template as well as use it to say launch a VM from it. Now, how the access check flow happens in the IAM model? So we have the two adapters in the plugin, API checker and security checker. It works on the IAM schema. The schema has all the default groups and policies loaded on startup. Consider a user and she has a virtual machine, say Foo, and she wants to start the VM. So it calls the API start virtual machine on the virtual machine Foo. Now first is the API checker, which checks if this operation can be invoked by the user. To do that, it just loads the policy of the user, which is user policy, and sees that there's a start virtual machine permission granted, so it can proceed. Security checker has to see that if this operation can be invoked on this particular VM, foo. To do that, it looks at scope of the permission, which is granted. In this case, the scope says account, which means this user can do start VM on VMs of her own account. Now, since virtual machine foo belongs to her account, the security checker grants the permission and the call can proceed. So consider a root admin. If same call is made by the root admin, the root admin policy says that the call can be invoked and it can be invoked on all virtual machines. So a root admin gets permissions. If it's another user trying to start this VM, we expect that he, she would be denied. API checker says the API can be invoked, but security checker will deny it because the VM doesn't belong to this user's account. We have another adapter called query selector. 
Now, this is a new adapter introduced in CloudStack to facilitate query APIs or listing APIs. Till now, most of our listing APIs handled their own access control logic and was hard-coded everywhere. And uh, in order to have a standard pattern, we introduced this query selector adapter. It has methods to get authorized domains, accounts, resources for a given caller. Now, uh, using this IAM feature, few use cases that we are able to achieve now. One is custom policy generation. So consider, say, a domain admin. Uh, he can list VMs in his domain, but he wants to create a group of accounts in the domain who can also list the VMs. So consider two accounts in a domain. The domain admin will first create a group, say, service desk group. Then creates a read-only policy using the IAM APIs and attaches permissions to list the VMs. And says that the scope of the VM is the domain. It means uh, current domain of the caller. Then attaches this policy to the group and adds the accounts to the group. By doing this operation, these two accounts get the permission to list VMs in their domains, not just their own VMs. Similarly, a cross-account grant can be achieved now. So if there's a user A having a virtual machine foo, and she wants to grant it to the another account B, and just creates a policy, say VM op policy, and uh, creates permissions for the operations she wants to grant. Say start virtual machine and stop virtual machine is to be allowed. So creates two permissions and specifies that the scope of this permission is resource, which means these operations can be invoked only on this particular resource, this particular resource ID, which is foo. And then attaches the policy directly to the account. Thus, this account, along with his own VMs, can now start and stop the VM foo. Now, some next steps for us um, for the next phases. We integrate the IAM model with all CloudStack access control logic. Uh, right now, we have worked on making sure that the current CloudStack model is reflected correctly on our new schema. We have to integrate some functionalities like shared and isolated networks with it. For example, uh, we, with IAM model, we did not have this classification of shared versus isolated in CloudStack. It could be just one entity called network, and shared would mean it is granted on a domain level. Isolated would mean it is granted on an account level. We haven't yet handled any non-controlled entities. The IAM model works uh, on account permissions, so account-based entities. So these are, they are called controlled entities of CloudStack. And they have account ID and domain ID. But then the entities like zone, service offering, disk offering, or uh, any resources like host, storage pool, all of them, they do not belong to one particular account. So we have to extend our IAM model to these entities as well. Once that is done, we can also integrate with the dedicated resource feature. Currently, it has its own APIs to dedicate a resource to an account. This exactly falls into the grant uh, concept of IAM. Another major step is we need to provide a UI support for IAM APIs so that it's easy to create policies and permissions. And further is handling JSON-based policy definitions. Our definitions are just API based on our schema. Uh, they are granular, but the limitation is that if it's a complex policy, then it involves invoking multiple API calls to do that. Instead, if we handle a policy statement where all permissions can be listed in a JSON format, it will be easy for anybody to create custom policies. Also, it will help us to integrate with any other third-party IAM implementations, which most likely work with JSON. Some references for our work um, is the functional spec is on, the, on our wiki, and it provides a lot of details on all the topics that we talked today. And we have also put up a guideline for API and service layer developers. This is important uh, because the developer should know what are the new annotations and what are the new patterns to follow so that the IAM server gets invoked correctly. And 
um, using that we will we will avoid any pre-baked logic further if we use those annotations. All right, uh, that's it. Any questions on the IM feature for me and Min? That would be a thought for future de development, definitely. But currently, CloudStack just uh, assigns permissions on account level. And users, or the keys that are created for users, are only a means of login or access, accessing the account. But I know that the traditional IM of, say, Amazon's IM works at user level and grants permissions at user level. Uh, but CloudStack doesn't work at user level for now. Any more questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you.